Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Upside Down. Today I decided to make an upgrade of one of the tools that I'm using most of my time and this is 3ds Max. I've decided that it's time for me to upgrade from 2016 to 2021 and I wanted to share some of the reasons why I did this. But first I would like to say why usually I'm not a huge fan of uh, upgrading always to the latest version of 3ds Max and also to share some of my concerns when updates are coming with some new features. So first thing that usually bothers me when it comes to upgrading to new version it's about all the plugins and and all the additional tools which I already have, which I already have for the version of Max. Usually it takes a couple of months, uh, sometimes even a year, and sometimes I even seen that some of the tools that don't even uh, come to the new version. And I'm used to already use some of them in my workflow, and uh, it speeds up a lot of my process. As well, I also have some custom tools which I usually don't have the time to upgrade, and this is why when I'm making the decision to go to a higher version, it's usually a big deal. So today is such case where I decided actually to go to my 2021 and I did this only because I saw really that there's quite a lot of benefits about game development today's video is exactly about those features which can improve our life as game art developers I'm still checking some of the new things that uh, they've added and some of the things that they've improved and as soon as I get a little bit more experience with them, I will share my thoughts on those also. But there are already a couple of things which I played this weekend quite a lot, and I like to share my thoughts on, on this. So new thing which works extremely well in Max 2021 is, of course, the PBR materials. This has been such a huge pain in some of the older versions before for me, because you cannot really see what when you're working with the PBR materials, what exactly you are doing. I always have to go either I was always going either to Marmoset or directly inside of Unreal, but this is not longer the case. We can now use just 3ds Max, and I'm happy to say that it works very well. Let, so let me show you what I'm talking about. To show you some of the things which I'm talking about, I'll have the help of our fellow Unreal mannequin. I just open the material editor, and if I right click somewhere, go to materials, we can go to general and we can see that we have the two popular PBR materials. We have metallic roughness and specular glossiness. Of course, as we are working with material roughness, we are going to be checking exactly that one. So we can see that it uh, already looks uh, quite familiar. We have our base color, we have our metalness, roughness, ambient, normal, and so on and so on. Everything that we pretty much need to visualize and uh, see what we are doing with our models. Another great thing are the already done presets of uh, PBR materials inside 3ds Max. Now when you open a new project inside 3ds Max, you automatically have by default some PBR material setups there. You can easily drag and drop to your models and check some quick results. I think that this is a really great feature, especially if uh, you're prototyping, because it gives you the opportunity to very quickly not spend time in uh, doing some specific material or se specific settings. You can very quickly just grab a material, drop it on your meshes and see the whole result. Of course, they're not perfect, but it's uh, a great start, as I said, for prototyping. Let me show you what exactly I have in mind. I will just go to Compact Material Editor so that it's a little bit easier and we can see all the materials that we have uh, by default here. So I'll just grab one, assign it to our guy. And it's that easy. We can go, for example, for car paint. Of course, at the moment it looks a little bit weird because uh, I don't have uh, still any lights, but we will get to that point. All right. Now let me show you the other thing which is really amazing and this is the new way that you can visualize and render inside your viewport. It looks very nice, works very well and very fast. And the best part is that we can use our HDRs to do this. Let me show you how you can do it. I'll remove the compact material editor because it's gonna be a bit easier. I'll right click somewhere on the empty spaces, go to maps, go to OSL and then we go to environment and HDR environment. Here we already have a couple of ready HDRs, but of course, if we want, we can use some of ours. I'll grab a studio light. Now what we need to do is we need to apply the studio light to our scene. I'll click eight on the keyboard so that I open environments and effects. And then I'll just grab the output of the material and drag it all the way to the environment. I'll make it an instance and you can see that we already have our lights in the viewport. If you're wondering that something is not quite right and it doesn't look correct, 
you are not gonna be wrong. Part which is not right is that at the moment we are actually not taking into consideration the lights from the HDRR. In order to fix this we need to go in our pair view, press it. It will open us this window where first I'll change the rendering from basics to advanced. After that, I will change the illuminate from default to the scene lights. Also, I will toggle the progressive scale light, which will give us more accurate shadows. I will increase a little bit the progressive fade time because I noticed one issue which is a little bit annoying. This is if it's on a very low setting, it refreshes and uh, makes this um, trembling on the scene, which uh, is kind of disturbing. So I just increase it uh, to a bigger fade time and it works pretty well. I will enable shadows and as well, this is one of the new cool things. We have ambient occlusion. All right, now we have already everything turned on and we can go back to our HDR where we can explore a couple of more settings. We have the rotation of the environment. Also, we have our blur background where we can blur our background if we're looking for an effect like this. And another very cool thing is our ground projection. So we can see that at the moment, if we are zooming out, our HDR is uh, just static. But if we come here and turn on the ground projection, we can see that it places our model on the ground. Another great thing which I want to talk about is a feature which also saves me a lot of time because I'm using quite a lot of substance in my work. So if I go back to our material editor, we can see that here on the side there is a substance. We can drag and drop it and in inside of it we can directly load our substance material. This is an amazing feature which saves you a lot of time if you're using quite a lot of substance painter, designer or alchemist. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that this video was useful for you and you can find some of this feature to speed up your process. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you didn't do this. And I'll see you tomorrow when we are continuing our Hellblade inspired environment modeling series. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.